Greetings and salutations everybody, my name is Rumok and thank you so much for joining me today on a special occasion of the first episode of Hyperlight Drifter and the first video that's going to be appearing on this channel. I am super excited to, you know, do this project and play this game with you guys. It's definitely, de definitely one of the things I've been wanting to do for a very long time. Um, I have a little bit of a side of a problem of actually starting a project, giving it 110% of my time, and then not actually doing anything about it. So this is my version of kicking myself own butt and actually getting up and actually doing a recording process or doing a recording session of this game. So we're playing Hyperlight Drifter and we're going to play this to completion unless I rage quit or whatever, but we're definitely going to go and enjoy this game. I've played this game a couple of times in the past um but recently they put out a patch i mean a couple weeks ago i forgot how long it was but they went from 30 frames per second to a lock in 60 and that's what kind of prompted me to go i should really do this game because i was trying to do it before um before this channel you can probably actually see maybe a deleted video from youtube on my channel or deleted playlist is because that i was you know still messing with everything but first things first, I love the art style of this game. It definitely a lot of symbolism, the 8-bit slash 16-bit art style. Um, definitely, you know, a lot of people say it's overused and it's uh, been over uh, popularized in these types of genres of games. But whenever a developer does it right and it looks phenomenal, as you can see here, it's just, it blows my mind how... You know, you have all these realistic looking games nowadays and we usually used to have to use our imagination whenever we were kids, whenever we were playing, you know, older games. But now that imagination is kind of taken out of the hyper realistic games and even with the new age 18 to uh, 8 to 16 bit graphic styles that most developers like to go by, you know, you can have the argument whether it's saying that it's easier to produce or easier to draw these out. But if you can see from these cutscenes, that doesn't look easy. This art style is phenomenal when it comes to these cutscenes, and it actually reminds me of a little bit of action adventure cutscenes. And I am just so impressed about what they did and how they went about everything. Um, the volume's a little bit high on my headphones. Give me one second while I uh, turn this down here a little. So you're going to hear a beep. Beep deep. Um, I'm just super amazed about what they did and how they went about this game. Um, but yeah, I mean, I came from the 8-bit to 16-bit era. I was born in 1989. So yeah, I'm about 27 right now. But nonetheless... Um, my background is definitely from the NES, a little bit of the NES because I was too young to really understand what the controller meant and what the actual games were, what I was looking at. But Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis is definitely where I come from in Nintendo 64. So I have a definitely appreciation and a little bit of nostalgia value to, um, actually these types of art styles and games. Um... But I can already tell there's a lot of symbolism going on in this uh, game. As you could, uh, you I wanted to talk about it before, but there's a lot of diamonds and they have like the kind of the Anubis dog. There's a diamond again. So there's one thing about this game that I, in this cutscene, you know, you see how it's deteriorating a little bit, that little virus. I'm thinking that it's a virus that's going on in this game that your character um, either gets either stronger or more infected because after this scene, the first thing that you do when you try to move, you start coughing up blood. And that either tells me that the infection's getting to this character, and I think he's just called the the drifter, right? So we wake up after that scene, whether if it was a dream or not, I have no idea. But the second you start moving, you start coughing up blood. Which is kind of crazy for me for a beginning character, knowing that either he's gonna die, like towards the end of the game. Or that, you know, I don't know. This game just seems so mysterious whenever I first picked it up. And I was like, wow, the Ari, the main character, is looking like he's going to die. Um, over overwhelming positive reviews on this game. Definitely want to check it out. And we're just going to play it for ourselves and see how everyone likes it. And if you do enjoy this uh, Let's Play, and I know I'm a little late on these games, but that's why I kind of try to do to myself like I physically wait on games to come out because either one they'll come out cheaper or two just 
I'm not one for buying systems or games whenever they first come out because there's a lot of hype around these certain types of products and um, stab myself so I can heal. Um, I like to wait. I don't know why, I just like to wait and to see what the product is and, you know, read reviews and see how everyone feels about the game. And that doesn't really, you know, drive my decision of buying a product. It just more makes me ready for the product. I guess that's the wrong way to put it or I'm like coming across very wrong. But I don't, I totally tend not to buy $60 games whenever they come out unless it's something that I'm super like looking forward to. Um, other than that, I like to wait on purchasing my games. Okay, that has a timer. Oh, ah, ah! Okay, so that one has a timer. Let's run. Or maybe because I hit it twice. Because I think if you hit it twice, it does go away. Okay, so it was my own fault. I, I shot it twice. And that's something about this game that I've noticed. That this game is not really that cheap. You just have to really understand and learn how the game is played. Um, for the couple of hours I have played this game, I never felt like the game was cheap. Kind of like in Dark Souls. Um, a lot of people compare this to a Dark Souls-esque type of game. And I can kind of agree with that uh, to a certain extent. That the game never really does anything to make you upset are that it was totally cheap and unfair. It's literally your own actions that caused the death, that caused the enemy to attack you more than two times. Um, you really do have to pay attention to attack animations and um, enemy patterns in this game, just kind of like Dark Souls. So I can definitely understand like where the comparison line is drawn. Um, but this is kind of its own, it lives in its own realm. And look at this art. Like, I really wish I could just sit there and get a screenshot of this. Like, I don't know why I haven't seen a wallpaper of this. Like, when I was pulling uh, art assets for the Let's Play, did not see this picture. I really want that picture to be, like, the thumbnail or something like that. I'll take a look at it and see what we can do about it. But, but yeah, I'm just really excited about this whole project. Oh, look, there he goes again. Coughing up blood. And it's even, like, a mechanical coughing blood. So, as you can see, like, there's a little bit of tales here about what's going on in this area. You see, like, the black and black lines that keep on coming up. That's got to be a, a uh, tale of, like, the infection or whatever it is. Because, oh my goodness. Like, these enemies look like from they're straight from Evangelion. Like, someone loved Evangelion whenever they made this game. They absolutely did. I can, no doubt about it, agree on that. But maybe I should leave, read more developer's notes or maybe they have some couple interviews about that. But whenever I go into a game, especially for Let's Plays, um, I know I say that I wait and I then sometimes read reviews. But I will do that after the fact that I played a couple hours on it. Um, I know for a fact that I, if there's a game that I want to buy, then... I guess I just learned through osmosis of like listening to podcasts or watching other YouTubers play Let's Plays of them. Or, you know, just being totally curious about the game. I'll buy a game and then just try to absorb it as much as possible. Kind of like when Undertale came out. Um, a lot of negativity and a lot of positivity was coming from that game. And I knew from, for a fact that I was going to like this game. So I went ahead and bought it and played it. And who knows, I might be doing a Let's Play of that next. Of the actual, uh, of Undertale. Still haven't played uh beaten the genocide run because jesus christ undying is just way too hard for me but um i kind of like to make decisions based off of just being as you know clear-minded as possible not trying to pollute myself with you know angry reviews or anything like that perfect example no man's sky um yes we can get into that conversation yes we can go ahead and start talking about the uh, the PR, you know, structure of that game and how that trailer is still up on the Steam webpage. But I, for a game that you can actually sit down and play, it's not that bad if you want to waste some time. Um, but anyway, let's let, okay. So the cutscenes in this game are depicted by n no text boxes whatsoever. They're just art. 
So we have here a um, looks like some kind of warrior, maybe a dog, and you can see that that guy is kind of uh, the guy who's telling the story is trying to open a door or close a door. But you can also see there's monsters around, right? So with those monsters being around, the guy who saved me looked like he saved them because that warrior got all beat up over there. And with being the elusive and quiet hero that he is, he just walks away, right? So that's another interesting part about this game is that a lot of it is not through dialogue text boxes. In the beginning stages, I should have talked about the beginning stages of um, coming in before this uh, town, was that there was no, there was nothing that told me that I, like text box, you need to go here, you need to go do this. Nothing really came up other than button prompts to say, hey, this is how you heal, this is how you maneuver, and this is how you attack. That's it. You got it. Like, there were clues on the ground that said, you know, the little white boxes as I was passing. It was telling me where to go. Um, so, I love games that do not hold my hand whatsoever other than to teach me how, what buttons do what and just lead me from there. Because you got to think about it. In Super Mario Brothers, there was no tutorial level. It literally just put you in the game and told you to run right. And that's it. You had to figure it out yourself to step on the Goomba's heads to actually kill them. And that's pretty much it. Like, I think that's all what the game is going to do from this point is just, hey, I get a new weapon, this is how you use it, and that's it. And then it's also going to put me in a situation that I have to use that new weapon so I can learn what it actually does in the game. So, there's not really much to go by as well, but I know with this game you can kind of go anywhere on the map. But the first thing it's kind of telling me to do is go north, okay? Um, maybe I forgot to talk to somebody, maybe because I was getting on a rant about No Man's Sky. But we'll come to that conversation later. Um, or right now, it just doesn't matter. Um, if you like burning time, if you've got like 10 to 15 minutes to burn, you don't know else what game to play. You know, I played No Man's Sky last night, and it wasn't that bad. Like, I kind of got mad that I got stuck. Like, I went to a plant that was very had a lot of radiation in it but other than that like it really wasn't that bad of experience like i still don't i i'm not saying the game is like oh my god it's so good it's so good you guys don't understand no i know the flaws i it is kind of a broken game and what they depicted in the trailer is not it yes i got burned by playing the game but since i paid that money to buy the game i'm still going to give it a chance um which other than playing it last night, it was a couple weeks before I played it then. But I popped it in, see how it was going, and it's still kind of, yeah, whatever. Okay, so this traveler guy is telling me about maybe a wizard of some sorts. Oh, nope. Oh, okay, see, um, now it's telling me to go north, right? Guy that you just saw in the picture, big bad guy, go fight him. And let's see if he's going to say anything else. Nope, he's not going to say anything else. So a good thing about this game design is that these uh, little walls here. Like, it, like in the beginning of the game, it told you that you can climb up the walls by doing this. And it's trying to teach you to be aware of your surroundings and aware of where you're going. I wonder if I, I just can't just like use these stairs right here. That's crazy. But even after talking to that... Oh, there we go. Oh, no. See? More cough and blood. More blood and cough. Well, I really think this is a good time to stop. I know I went al already on a rant about some things, and maybe I probably shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have talked more about the game. But in the next episode, we're going to get a little bit more into detail of actually like what's going on. Maybe we might learn some other things about what the storyline is. But as of right now, let me know in the comments below to see if you actually want me to keep on playing this or if you want me to actually stay on task and stop talking about random stuff that no one even really cares about. But again, my name is Rumok. Thank you so much for joining me today in today's episode. And just, I'll see you all again next time. Woo! Woo, woo! Yeah! Yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Woo! Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. I can't. I can't deal with this right now. Okay. That. Yeah. I don't. Uh, oh. Uh, ah, ah!